Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another machine learning video. In this video, we're gonna talk about polynomial regression. Now, up to this point, we've learned about linear regression and also multiple linear regression and how to build linear regression models using gradient descent and also other techniques like the normal equation as a closed form solution. Um, so now we're gonna move on to other machine learning models. And the first one that we're gonna look at now is polynomial regression, which is a way of building a model that is instead of a linear line that attempts to model a linear relationship, now we can build models that model curves. So let's take a look. So here's what we get with our linear regression model. If we have a linear relationship in our data, we can build a model that represents the best fit line for that. But if our data looks like this, where there's a clearly a curve, having a linear model does not make sense. So this linear line does not really fit the curve in any way. So linear regression will not work for us. This is where polynomial regression comes in. Instead of having a simple line, we're going to have a polynomial. So let's take a look at our equations here. So I'm sure you're familiar with the quadratic equation. So this is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So this is just a simple polynomial that has a degree of two. The degree of a polynomial is the highest exponent. So x squared, two is the highest one, so the degree is two. And that's gonna be for a quadratic equation. And if you just plot a quadratic line like x squared, that's the most basic you know, version of that, this is what you get. You always get a U shape. So just by changing the exponent of our equation, we're now able to move to curved lines instead of just straight lines. And the thing about polynomials is that the highest degree isn't two. This is just one example of the for quadratic equations, but you can have a polynomial with any degree potentially. So this is a more generalized form of that same equation, allowing for any degree. So, and it also has the terms that we are already familiar with, like theta and x. So we have y is equal to theta zero. That's still our y-intercept or our bias term. And then we have plus theta one times x plus theta two times x squared plus theta three times x to the cubed, um, all the way up until theta n times x to the power of n. And this equation looks very similar to the equation that we learned about with linear regression, except that now we have exponents. So n is not gonna represent the number of features that we have per se, it's gonna represent the degree of our polynomial, okay? So if you have a polynomial of degree two, you get something that looks like this. If you have a polynomial of degree three, you would get all the way up until here. So this entire thing here, usually you might see this in like the reverse though, where the highest exponent comes first and then it descends down until uh, the last one here, the bias term, okay? So that's our polynomial model, right? And just like before, we need to find the best theta for our model, the best parameters for our model, and we're gonna learn how to do that. We move on here. This is an example of our polynomial regression model with actual values. So I had this data set, I plotted it, and then I came up with this line here, which is our polynomial regression model. And this is the polynomial for that model. So we have y is equal to 1.8295x squared minus 0.8x plus 2.95. So our bias term is gonna be 2.95, which is theta zero. Theta one is gonna be negative 0.82. And then theta two is gonna be positive 1.8. And it's really cool just by having this degree of two for this polynomial here, we're able to model a curved relationship rather than just a linear relationship. So, so the question is, how do we actually do this? And it's actually really simple. So I just literally drew it on a piece of paper. So just like before, we have our X data set, right? And we can have this in a matrix. So the first column of our input matrix is gonna be our column of ones because we're gonna need that for the bias term. So X sub zero is gonna be one. And then you have the feature, so X one, that's gonna be two, four, six, and eight. So nothing about this is different from our linear regression model data set. Um, this is gonna be the same thing. We just have a data set, we have one feature, we're adding a column of ones for the bias term, but now what we wanna to do to get it to work for polynomial regression is we want to convert this data set into a form that we can use for polynomial regression, okay? So the first thing that you have to do is choose the degree of your polynomial, okay? So we're gonna choose degree two just for a quadratic polynomial. So what you would do is you would add columns for however many degrees that you choose. So in this case, since we chose a degree of two, we would take x1 and then add a column for that and do x1 squared. And it's squared because we chose a degree of two. If you chose a degree of three, you would add x1 squared and then x1 cubed as another column. So you would keep going depending on how many degrees you have, okay? So for the simple example here, this is our input matrix. We want to transform it so that we can do polynomial regression with a degree of two. So we are adding a third column that takes our feature and squares it. So we'll have one, 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 we'll have two, four, six, eight, then we'll have four, 16, 36, and 64. And what is really cool is that is literally all you have to do. So after you transform your input matrix in this way, all you have to do is feed that into your normal linear regression training system. So 
Nothing about this is different. So you can feed this into the normal equation. You can feed this into gradient descent. And as long as you find your thetas, you're good to go. So you'd find a theta for the bias term. So theta zero, theta one, and then you have theta two for this new column that we added for the degree of two. So I just want to emphasize that again, training the model is completely the same as linear regression. The only difference is that you have to pre-process your input data set to have more columns depending on the degree of your polynomial, okay? So we can just generalize this equation to account for any degree. So if we choose a degree of D, this would be what our input matrix looks like. We have still our column of ones, then we have X1, X2, X3, all the way up until XD. I really hope that makes sense. It does get a little bit more complex when you have different variables. So instead of X, maybe you have Y as well, or A, B, C. Um, that's going to get even more advanced. But for this video, we're going to focus on just having one feature and then having a polynomial regression model for that feature to model a more complex relationship. And then if you want to have a data set that has multiple features, um, the thing that we're going to use from Scikit-Learn is able to do that automatically for you. So you don't really have to worry about that. Anyway, so here's a little graph I want to show you guys, which is pretty helpful. I know there's a lot of information on it, but it's pretty simple. So the blue dots here is going to represent our data points. So that's just our data set. And we have this curved sort of relationship here, right? And this is gonna show the differences between different polynomial models. With a degree of one, that would just be a linear you know, line. So you would get something like this, which is obviously not optimal. If you have a degree of two, you would get something like this, the dotted blue line. That one looks way better. But then if you have a polynomial of degree 300, which is definitely possible, you would get something even more insane. So what you notice is that as you increase the degree, your polynomial model really starts to overcompensate and try and capture every data point as much as possible. So, so you can see here that it's trying to get all these points as closely as possible, and you can even go higher than 300 and it would get even more complex. So it's gonna try its best to go through every single data point depending on the degree that you have. So this leads us to a sort of trade-off situation that you have when you make these kinds of models. The trade-off is choosing the best degree for your polynomial model. So if your degree is too low, you're not gonna capture the meaning of the data set. If the degree is too high, you're going to overfit. Let me describe what those terms mean. So first you have underfitting. Underfitting simply means that the model cannot capture the meaning of the data. Therefore, it cannot make predictions that are useful for us. And that's really exemplified by this degree one line that we have here. It's not really able to model our data set in any meaningful way. And then you have overfitting, which is represented by our polynomial with 300 degrees. What this means is that the model performs well on the training data, but performs badly or not so good on unseen data or the test data. And that kind of makes sense. You can see that as the degree rises, it really tries to go through every single data point as best as it can. As you can see, it's going up and down really radically instead of like through the middle really smoothly. What that will give you is an outcome where the model performs well on the training data. This is the training data set that we're using to create the model. But if we give it some data points that are part of the test set or unseen data, it will not perform well because it overfit on the training data, meaning that it's unable to generalize and become useful for unseen data, which is the whole point of a model, right? We want our machine learning model to be able to give us predictions that make sense for things that it's never seen before. So anyways, that's the trade-off dilemma that you have when training these types of models and other models too. You have underfitting and you have overfitting. And a big part of that is choosing the proper degree of your polynomial. And so obviously that begs the question, how do you choose the proper degree for your polynomial? How do you know when you've reached that sort of sweet spot between underfitting and overfitting? And the most naive approach is just to keep trying different degrees for your polynomial until you get good results. That is able to work both on the training set and the test set. But in the future, we'll learn more advanced techniques for tuning uh, stuff like this. But for now, you can sort of just play with it to find the proper degree. And it's just important to be aware of this sort of dilemma here of underfitting and overfitting, okay? All right, guys, let's see how we can train a polynomial regression model. So first of all, I'm using this data set from Kaggle. It's just a simple data set that has one feature and one target. So it just represents a temperature and that predicts the sales of ice cream. So the temperature of ice cream and the sales of ice cream. So I just downloaded that as a CSV file and then I uploaded it to the notebook files and now just import it using pandas. So import pandas as PD and then we could do data set is equal to PD dot read CSV. And I would just make sure that that was imported successfully by doing data set dot head and boom. So here's our data set. So we have our temperature and our ice cream sales. Great. Now let's go ahead and split it up into our X matrix, our input matrix. And so we'll do data set dot I L O C we want all rows and then we want all columns except for the last column, just like that. This will convert to a NumPy array and then Y is equal to data set dot I L O C all rows, but now we only want the last column. So negative one dot values. So that would be a NumPy 
array as a uh, a vector. So there we go, now we have our x and y. We can just print out x if we feel like it. There we go, doesn't really mean much, but now let's go ahead and visualize our data so we can see the kind of plot that we're trying to model. And here's the code to make the plot. So we're telling it the x input data, the y, we wanna make it red, uh, title, x label, y label, show it. So boom, here's our data labeled. So now we can see that clearly a linear regression model is not gonna work here. We need something that is able to curve. And of course, one of the things that we just learned about is polynomial regression models. So just as an example, I'll just prove to you what a linear regression model will look like. So linear model import linear regression. So from scikit-learn import the linear regression model. So we're gonna call this linear model is equal to linear regression. And then we're going to do linear model dot fit so we're fitting the model, we're training the model on the x input data and the y target variable. And then now we can go ahead and plot the results of this model. So we are again plotting the x and y and having the color be red, so same as up here. But then now we're adding another line that will be modeled by our x input data and the actual predictions of the model. So instead of the actual values, it's gonna be the predictions using the model, and that's gonna be a blue line, so let's take a look. And here we go, so this is our linear model, and obviously it cannot really capture the meaning of our data here. And I told you guys before that training a polynomial regression model is the exact same thing as a linear regression model. The only difference is the data that you have to transform, which is really cool, we don't have to really change anything. So to actually transform the data though, we can use another thing from scikit-learn. So from sklearn.preprocessing, import polynomial features like that. So now let's make an instance of this. So polynomial features. And what we can pass to this is the degree. Again, the degree is the highest exponent of our polynomial. And so since we can clearly see a U shape, let's just try a degree of two, because that's what a quadratic line looks like usually. So we'll do degree is equal to two. So that will transform the matrix in the way that I showed you before, where it adds another column with the feature squared essentially, okay? So to actually do that though, we're going to do x poly is equal to polyreg dot fit transform x. So what this will do is take in our x matrix, do all the transformations it needs, and then return the new x matrix into this variable here. And that's it. So now we could literally just make another linear model. So linear model two is equal to linear regression. And we could say linear model two dot fit x and y. But instead of x, actually, it should be x poly because that's our transformed input. So we have our transform input, we have our actual, which is y, or our target variable rather, and calling fit here is actually gonna train the model, so now we can make predictions. Just like before, we're gonna take this plot up here, and we're just gonna replace it with linear model two, and then change our x to x poly. Okay, so hopefully that's making sense, and we'll just do plt.show. And here we go, so here's our model. So you can clearly see that it's able to, let me change this by the way, it should be polynomial regression. I spelled it wrong, but that's fine. So this looks perfect, right? As you can see, it's able to model our data set really well. Um, this is a very simple data set, so obviously um, there's not much of a challenge here, but as you can imagine, as your data set gets more complex, you want to sort of play with that degree that I told you about. So we could change it to a degree of three, see what that looks like. It looks visually the same for you know our human eyes. Let's change it to a degree of 13, see what that looks like. And now you can see that when you give it more degrees, it's gonna start trying to fit the training data uh, more closely. So it's gonna try going through all of the points as best as it can. So instead of going smoothly through the middle of all the points in a way that um, allows you to predict more generally, it's gonna go through specific points. And what this leads to, like I told you before, is overfitting. Overfitting is when it does really well in the training data because it's modeling it so closely, but it does not generalize and do well on unseen data or our test data, okay? So it's kind of fun. You could really just play around with the number of degrees that you have. So we could try 300. And now you get a model that makes absolutely no sense. So 300 obviously would not work for any situation. You could do 30. That looks even crazier. So that's obviously not a good model either. And then what you could do if you want to is once you have your model, you could print out the intercept, the bias term, um, and also your coefficients, your model weights. And then here's the equation that I showed you before, just using the intercept and those coefficients. So, and that's pretty much it for this episode, everybody. That's pretty much all I wanna show you guys. This is how you can train a simple polynomial regression model using scikit-learn. Besides evaluating the model, because we're gonna focus on that in future episodes, one other thing is that usually after you split up your data set into the X matrix and the Y target variable, what you wanna do is split that up into a training set and a test set, and then feed that into your model training. 
that's the only thing that we did not do in this episode. But um, from previous episodes, I'll show you guys how to do that. The main focus of the episode, though, is just how to actually do this, how to make a polynomial regression model. So, so hopefully you understand all that. And that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, stay tuned for more episodes. So that's it for this video, everybody. I really hope you learned something new. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Make sure to also check the description below for important links to code and other resources. But also really important, join our Discord. We have a big community of over 5,000 programmers, and it's a place where you can find new friends or get help on any code that you're stuck on. If you want to support what I do on this channel, please consider hitting the join button below. And this will allow you to support my channel for as low as $1 a month, but there are different tiers to choose from if you want to. For anyone that becomes a member on my channel, you get a special rank on my Discord server, early access to new videos and you can just see yourself on the screen right now so if that sounds cool to you feel free to join if you don't want to that's fine if you can't that's okay too i really just appreciate you watching the video anyway thank you so much and that's it peace